the night before she passed away, um, I had gotten home late from work and um, I came in and she was on my side of the bed so I went on the other side and I didn't want to disrupt them so I just kind of laid on top of the blankets and I put my head on the pillow and I had about six inches of the bed and I was just laying there and I, she woke up when I got in bed and realized that I wasn't under the covers so she couldn't really talk you know so but she motioned you know in her in her own special way to my wife and she said that she wanted my wife to um, to cover me, to put the covers over me, and you know, so that I would be comfortable, you know, when I slept. My my daughter's name is 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 Zoe Marie, and um, she was a breath of fresh air. She was sunshine, basically. Um, she passed away uh, right before her second birthday on Thanksgiving morning and um, she was diagnosed at an early age of seven months with ATRT, which is a rare uh, form of, of brain cancer. It's aggressive, um, and it was, it was sort of a, you know, a, a, a remarkable journey. Children are resilient. They just, you know, they don't, she came out of a couple of the, uh, one of the brain surgeries where it was five days after it and she was just playing on the ground like nothing had ever happened. Um, and, you know, she was always laughing. She always wanted me to watch her dance. And, you know, she was just, you know, she just would make the whole situation better because she would look, you would look in her eyes and she would, she would just smile at you. And, you know, your heart would melt and then you would say to yourself, you know, it's impossible for there to be only, you know, a 12 to 15 percent chance that she's going to survive through this. Look at her, you know, how she is, you know. But this disease that, you know, this cancer that she had was so aggressive, they had only known of 50 cases in the whole world at the time that she was actually diagnosed with it. And, you know, you, you look at it and you say, you know, it's impossible for her to, ha you know, to be going through it. She's going to, you know, be better the next day, you know. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, it didn't turn out that way. I, I knew that, there, that I had a mission in mind. And my, my mission was to come up with something, and it was to make, you know, bottle the sauces. They're, my sauces are, are recipes that evolved from things that my grandmother used to make. You know, I guess my mission statement would be, you know, you know, we want to help fight ch uh, children's brain cancer one jar at a time. You know, we want to sell one jar at a time. We want to help fight it one jar at a time. And that, that's just, you know, f you know, you don't have to buy ten jars. You just buy one jar. You know, once you buy the one jar and you get hooked on it, then you continually go back. And each jar, you know, adds more money and more more hope and more progress to finding a cure for children's brain cancer. But what, what our main focus is, is to, is to make, you know, uh, the future an easier place for, you know, families to have greater hope with uh, finding a cure for children's brain cancer. When she was at um, St. Jude's, she would always want to be pulled around the hospital in, in a wagon. and. I don't know if it was her popularity with all the nurses and the doctors and all the people there, but she would she would pick the specific wagon and she'd want to get in it, and then you'd put some pillows in there and she'd sit there and she'd have this big smile on her face, and she would just um, she would just love it. This video and others like it, made possible by support from local organizations and friends of the community like you. Oh.